All right. Whereas the first half of chapter four was dealing with your amino acid residues and what they are, the second half of chapter four is going to be dealing with amino acids and the interactions that they have with their given target. First such interaction we're going to deal with is ionic interactions, positive, negative charges interacting with each other. So here, if you know your residues, you already know the types of charges that you'll have on a given residue. For example, aspartate and glutamate, the COH residue, um, that COH functional group is going to be deprotonated at physiological pH. Arginine has the guanidium ion, lysine has the primary amine. Okay, both of those have pretty high pKa's, so they're going to stay protonated and they will have a positive charge at physiological pH. Histidine is a little bit of a more unique case than arginine and lysine. Its pKa is between 5 and 8, depending upon the surrounding amino acids in a given peptide chain. Um, on the left, we have the neutral form, and the neutral form is primarily aromatic, and it'll participate in aromatic interactions. Okay, You can clearly see that the electrons here can participate in aromaticity. But the electrons on this nitrogen on the right can also get protonated, and then if it's protonated, you have a positive charge and it's participating in ionic interactions. Now less than 50% of the histidine is going to exist in the protonated state at physiological pH. It's because the pKa is between 5 and 8, and physiological pH, it's slightly above 7. All right. It might seem a little weird that we have aspartate and glutamate are going to be negatively charged, but glutamine and asparagine are not going to be charged um, at physiological pH. And the reason behind that is if you remember from chapter 3, when you have an NH2 next to a C double O bond, the resulting resonance structure is going to center some negative charge around the oxygen and then you're going to have some positive charge present on the nitrogen, okay? And any sort of protonation is going to happen at the oxygen, but the pKa for protonating that oxygen is going to be really, really low, such that essentially like none of it actually happens at physiological pH. Now it also might seem a little weird that we have a negative charge here and a positive charge here, but we don't think of glutamine or asparagine as participating in ionic re ionic interactions and the reason behind that is because remember these are resonance structures so this structure doesn't exist this structure doesn't exist um they're really just weighted um they're really just representations of the possible states and some forms are weighted more than other and contribute more to the overall structure last thing we want to keep in mind is the n terminal nh3 plus and the c terminal co minus those are going to be charged Right, so we have a positive charge on the N terminal, we have a negative charge on the uh, C terminal. There's no charges in the middle of the chain, okay? Because when you have this peptide bond that forms, you'll notice that the charges go away, okay? So there's gonna be no CO minus, there's gonna be no NH3 plus. Those condense in order to form your peptide bond. All right, so that's our summary of the ionic interactions that can occur with the different amino acids.